This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. This video will show you how to get your Whirlpool dishwasher cleaning like new again by actually cleaning some of its internal parts, which are pretty easy to get to. I'm just going to turn this little screw clockwise to loosen it so we can take off this lower spray arm, turning it to our right. And we've already taken out the lower rack. Looking at the spray arm, I'm noticing that some of the little holes are full of food particles. So I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers to pull out the stuff or the things I can't pull out, I'll push them back in and then can use water to pour in to the uh, main hole in the back and that water can help carry out the debris but if these are clogged uh, they're not able to shoot water onto the dishes and that can be part of why they're not getting clean this little piece can be pushed in and then we can lift this plastic clip out of the way and that's going to let us take out the upper rack because we have to remove the upper rack to be able to get to some of the parts we need so pushing on that pin, we'll pull these little clips out on either side, and we can lift the upper rack up and out of the way. This would be a good thing to do about once a year to really keep your dishwasher doing great. Probably take you about 20 minutes. So pulling the upper rack out of the way, and I'm looking at the same thing on the upper rack, the little holes, I see some of them are clogged. So I'm using some needle nose pliers to pull the stuff out of there. So now we're gonna use a Torx 15 bit to loosen up some screws. Some of these screws actually were being covered up by a pipe that was going up toward the top. I removed that pipe by taking out a couple of Phillips head screws that was holding that in and turning the pipe assembly to about one o'clock and then it was able to release. So we just took out this filter assembly and now we're getting down into the area where you often find clogs. I'm using a Torx 10 to undo this little screw. And then I'll either use my fingers or a pair of pliers to grab this part so I can pull this sump cover up and out of the way. And I'm just going to clean all this stuff. And I'll use a little turkey baster to get the remaining water that's down here in the lower sump out of the way so I can see better what's going on. Sometimes when you look down in this area you'll find like little pieces of broken glass and seeds and all kinds of stuff. This one was not too bad, not too dirty. Just found a few little uh, things, a couple labels. The main part on this dishwasher that was really clogged is a little metal screen it lives down in this area that I'll show you here in a second. It was probably 90% occluded with um, probably paper labels that they were steaming off of uh, glass jars that they were um, cleaning with a dishwasher. And that's really what was causing it to, to have such poor cleaning results. So here's that part I was mentioning and it's a, it's like a little metal filter so it's super clogged and barely letting any water flow through that then blocks the circulation pumps ability to move the water powerfully and it's not able to spray onto the dishes very strong pretty anemic so we're using this brush to clean off all that stuff it's really baked on there and now it's starting to look nice and silvery and clear, which is what we want. And that means that all the holes are open and the water can just shoot right through there. So I warn these uh, people, these customers to not use um, the dishwasher to steam off the labels because this is a classic problem and it clogs up the circulation and then the dishwasher really just doesn't work. This one was probably down about 80% from its potential. So 
So this is for the Whirlpool, sometimes uh, be labeled under KitchenAid or Kenmore. And uh, it's pretty much the same innards, same way of doing this procedure. And we're gonna clean this part, they call the dam. This helps catch some of the big things that might try to um, clog up your system. So you just wanna run this under hot water, get everything super clean. This is the upper filter assembly. <clears throat> or this is the sump cover, getting that clean. And then there's a, another filter above this that we also clean up. But the main culprit was that um, silver metal filter uh, was really almost 100% blocked. And then once we've got this clean, we're just going to put it all back together kind of in reverse order. So this is the this is that filter that goes on the on the very top of the sump assembly. Just showing the customer that screen is nice and clean now. So we can start putting this back together. We got the screen put back into the sump cover and get that back into position. We're going to put that Torx 10 screw back in. Make sure this sits down really, really tight and strong in position. It's not loose. If it's loose, keep, keep trying until you get it nice and flat putting in the sump cover and the, and the sump uh, filter. We're gonna add those Torx 15 screws back in. And once those are in, we're gonna add that pipe that carries water up to the middle spray arm and the top spray arm. So we're just getting those tight. And just snug, you don't have to, you don't have to over tighten them, but just where they Squeeze down. Got one more of those Torx 15 screws. That's the one that kind of hides underneath that, that pipe. I'm gonna put in this big plastic nut that holds on the lower spray arm. I'm putting on that pipe now it goes down at about one o'clock these lugs fit in and you turn it to your left until it's at your 12 o'clock position we're going to add two Phillips head screws to hold it in putting on the lower spray arm I have to lift up a little bit on this nut there we go and I'll put that on and it's kind of counterintuitive. I'm turning it counterclockwise to tighten it. Put in this Phillips head screw right here to hold that pipe in position. There's also one at the top. So I tried putting it in with the screwdriver, but it's better to start it by hand to get the threads to engage. And you can use your screwdriver to get it in there tighter. That's for the upper spray arm. I also clean the upper spray arm out a little bit of gunk in it. And that's it. And then the dishwasher did super good. Put the racks back in, you're done. So thanks so much for watching. And please subscribe when you get a chance so we can send you a lot more videos. Thanks again.